Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Friday. Hope we're having a wonderful week and hopefully getting ready for the weekend out there. And we've got a couple things to talk about in today's video from tropical mischief to some nicer, drier air on the way for many of us here across the East Coast. I'll break all that down for you in today's video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. We are trying to get to 10,000 by the end of hurricane season. And uh, yesterday's video did great. We've had some great growth over the past couple of weeks. So I feel very confident we can get there. Uh, but ultimately, can't do it without your support. Also, make sure to like the video. Uh, it does a lot in helping out the video and comment. Also, let me know uh, what you're seeing in your neck of the woods this morning or afternoon or evening whenever you are watching this. Um, also, kind of the obvious thing for my regulars, I did some revamping here on the channel, so the video looks a little different. Uh, also, the banner and the channel logo are slightly different. Uh, so if you like it, let me know. Definitely. Personally, I'm a big fan of it. I'm excited for it. I think uh, it's really going to help kind of elevate the channel uh, maybe to that next level going into hurricane season. So again, uh, exciting times and a lot of cool things happening. Uh, but uh, yeah, with all that said, I think we're good to go ahead and start here. So let's go ahead and talk about what you're seeing next to me here. And that is satellite imagery. So uh, again, the big player at home right now is uh, the current um, trough that is kind of moving into the Midwest and eventually going to sag down towards the Southeast uh, and Mid-Atlantic, but especially really the Mid-Atlantic here uh, throughout the next couple of days. And to the South of there, we've got a lot of cloud cover you uh, can see that here. We've had that problem over the past couple of days where we've just had a ton of rainfall from Texas to the Carolinas. Uh, and we're going to see more of that today and really tomorrow as well, unfortunately. But this trough up to the north is slowly going to scoot off to the east and eventually bring some drier air uh, down into portions of the mid-Atlantic and even parts of the southeast. So I'll tell you who that is. It's going to get that later on in the video. But uh, that's kind of the main player here uh, at current look with satellite. Radar is a, a similar story. Again, it's nice in the Midwest and the Northeast, but in the Southeast where that cloud cover still dominates, rainfall is also dominating. Again, from Texas to the Carolinas, a couple big hot spots currently uh, from the Texas Gulf Coast up through the Memphis area. Also uh, from the Outer Banks just offshore of South Carolina, a nice clustering of thunderstorms this morning and afternoon uh, working on through. Also even a little hot spot here near the Charlotte area uh, getting in on some of that action. So again, uh, no shortage of active scenes on radar and uh, same story on satellite. Now, as for our watches, warnings, and advisories, things are relatively quiet, but don't let your guard down because we do have a couple trouble spots here. Uh, so first up uh, here towards uh, the Houston area of Texas, widespread flash flood watches and even flash flood warnings here just south of Houston uh, and some isolated spots up here into East Texas getting in on some of that flash flooding. So uh, obviously not something you want to see from Corpus Christi all the way up near Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, and back towards even the Lake Charles area, seeing some flooding out of this. Uh, and unfortunately, that's going to continue this afternoon uh, as those flood watches indicate. Now back towards the Carolinas, flooding is also possible from Myrtle Beach, Georgetown, to up to Florence, Wilmington, Fayetteville, uh, even into uh, portions uh, near the Jacksonville area of North Carolina uh, and kind of just southeastern North Carolina in general uh, could see some flooding. We've already seen some flooding in this area the past couple of days. The good news, we had pretty bad drought here and this is really putting a dent in that. So uh, that's the good news and we'll obviously take any kind of drought relief we can get, but you have to have a way to get those watches and warnings and advisories should anything be issued due to that flooding. So yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at there. All right, so the next uh, big topic we're going to talk about are the tropics, and obviously that's probably why you clicked on the video in the first place, and things have been quiet since Beryl. If you remember back at the beginning of the month and at the end of June, we had Hurricane Beryl shatter all sorts of records, uh, gained Category 5 status, which is, uh, you know, quite honestly, really unheard of, and uh, that was the earliest we've ever seen Category 5 status in the Atlantic. Uh, but since then, things have calmed down, and I think a lot of people have probably let their guard down a little, but I don't want you to completely let it down because uh, we've got some robust waves here out into portions of the Atlantic, uh, just kind of right here in the main development region. You'll notice uh, some, you know, big areas of convection are firing and slowly uh, working, uh, you know, eastbound. Uh, through much of the Atlantic and or excuse me westbound I should say uh, and that's going to be a theme that continues now right now from the National Hurricane Center nothing is expected to develop 
in the next seven days. So this is straight from the experts. However, again, don't let your guard down because what we could see develop could be right at the edge of that seven day mark. Uh, and some of our models are very excited about this possibility of tropical development, not far from the United States. And likely, I'll just tell you now, if something does develop, uh, very high likelihood it will impact the United States in some uh, way, shape or form. And we'll take a look at those potential tracks here in just a second. But again, right now from the National Hurricane Center, nothing expected in the next seven days. Uh, but that doesn't include day eight, day nine, and uh, some of those other days. So uh, one of the main reasons, though, that we aren't seeing development and we haven't seen development since barrel is this map right here. This is water vapor loop in the mid levels. Uh, and for tropical storms to develop, they like moist air. They like uh, to have plenty of uh, precipitable water in the atmosphere to feed off of. But uh, we've got right now a big block of dry Saharan dust uh, that has blown off the Saharan desert and is really right here into the heart of the Atlantic from uh, the area is near the Antilles uh, to the east of there uh, through the main development region. Again, a lot of dry air is uh, currently, you know, going to inhibit some development. But you'll notice here, again, some of these waves are just to the south of that and kind of uh, in their own environment of some moist air. And they're going to try to hold on to that for a little bit here uh, before eventually running into this dry air. And that's why nothing is expected in the next three, five and even probably seven days. After that, though, uh, there are some signs that there could be some changes on the horizon here in the Atlantic. And uh, if we take a look at that, again, this is kind of right now and going into this weekend. Here is all of that dry air that I just mentioned, again, in this uh, kind of brown color on your map. And to the south of there, here is uh, one wave. There's kind of another wave just behind it here. And watch what happens uh, with these areas of tropical moisture as I move this ahead. Uh, so we're going to you know, bring this into early this week. And you'll notice, again, they're running into that dry air. They're getting choked up a little bit. But watch what happens as we go to the last day of July and especially into the start of August here. Uh, one of these ways kind of manages to fight off that dry air long enough that it gets into an environment that's going to be a little bit more favorable for development once it gets north of uh, Puerto Rico and uh, eventually uh, then moving towards the Bahamas and towards Florida, uh, where again, development chances are going to be much higher uh, and uh, ingredients are just going to be much more readily available for these systems uh, once we get to that level. So uh, again, that's what we're looking at right now. And um, uh, you know, we've got, we've got some time to track this. Luckily, we've got a couple of days, but um, there are all signs indicating that things are going to get more active here towards the start of August and the uh, experts here at NOAA agree at the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, they are highlighting an area there for that first week of August of potential increased development chances uh, right over, you know, this area of the Atlantic from the Antilles to Puerto Rico to Hispaniola, Cuba, the Bahamas. Uh, and that's something we're going to have to watch for. And even after that, as we get closer towards the middle of the month, uh, another area that we're going to need to watch for development here back closer towards the main development region. So uh, that is definitely, you know, going to have the chance to uh, make things a lot more active here. I think once we get towards the middle of August, especially, but uh, even really the start of August, we've got this first wave to watch. So things are really picking up in the Atlantic. Uh, and I wanted to show you this map. This shows um, how far we have until generally impacts are felt in the United States with these tropical waves. And the wave we're watching uh, is still kind of out here. And if we look at our uh, chart here, that means we've still got, you know, a good eight to 12 days or so before impacts would be felt. So uh, that's why the National Hurricane Center doesn't have anywhere outlined right now. But again, some of our models, one of them specifically, uh, is really picking up on the potential of this developing. And uh, we'll show you that here next. But um, another thing I want to show you before that is is uh, this map. I showed this in a couple uh, videos ago. Uh, this is Atlantic hurricane season activity based on the date. And just a reminder, I'm recording this the 26th of July. Uh, so we're kind of about right here. Uh, and you'll notice it's pretty normal for things to be quiet right now. But what you'll also notice is as we get to August 1st here, uh, things are likely to ramp up very quickly. And August through October uh, is really going to be the heart of hurricane season uh, this year, I think, just like climatology would suggest. Uh, so again, don't let your guard down just because things have been quiet since barrel. I know that might have uh, brought a little bit of a jump scare even to some folks, but unfortunately that was not the end of this hurricane season and we're likely to see uh, at least a couple more major hurricanes before the season is over, some of which could again unfortunately impact uh, the United States directly. So we'll have to keep on watching out for that, uh, but I think that's a great map to show.
All right, let's talk uh, some models here now and look at some model guidance and see where this wave is going. This is our latest European model uh, from last night, and uh, the European has been much more excited about this threat than all of our other models, but some of the other models are kind of slowly getting towards the European uh, side of things in that thinking. So um, again, this is the latest model run. I'm going to go ahead and draw just a couple things on here for you. Uh, first area you're going to want to look is right here. Here's that wave. This is getting into next Wednesday. So the last day of July here, uh, getting towards the start of August, again, that wave getting kind of out of that dry air a little bit more. And again, as I mentioned, once it gets kind of to the longitude of about the Antilles or Puerto Rico, uh, it's going to have much more favorable conditions to develop. And the European agrees here. Uh, and as we you know move this ahead into time, again, getting into the first couple days, of August, that wave, again, still a wave, but strengthening a little, becoming more developed, and eventually, as it passes the islands here and gets towards the Gulf on this model run, uh, really begins to develop, and we've got a tropical storm in the Gulf 10 days from now. So, um, again, this is just one model run, but the European has been showing this pretty consistently for at least two days or so now. Um, and uh, anytime a model like the European, you know, shows something like this, this consistently, you're going to really want to pay attention to it. However, I don't want you to think that that means, you know, this is absolutely a set in stone thing. In fact, if I show you the GFS model starting at the same time, uh, the last day of July here, here's that wave again, still showing up uh, pretty well here. Uh, but as we move this ahead into time, you'll notice uh, again, the wave's a little bit further south that it has to run over Hispaniola, runs over Cuba, kind of gets shredded a little bit. And then, yes, the wave does end up in the Gulf. Uh, but uh, the GFS here doesn't really develop it into much. In fact, uh, you know, the most we get is barely a kind of area of uh, some cutoff low pressure uh, here into the Western Gulf. Again, this is even more than 10 days from now. So uh, pretty far out. Oh, the models are going to have plenty of time to analyze this. And as I showed you earlier, uh, again, we're still 8 to 12 days from any kind of impacts likely to the United States. So we've got more than a week to figure this out, more than a week to follow the trends. Uh, and we will absolutely do that. Now, one reason that I feel a little bit more confident than maybe a day or two ago about this system's potential is this map right here. These are our European ensemble members, uh, and you'll notice, I'd say at least a good, you know, probably even more than 50%, probably a good 60, 75% of the members here uh, are showing development from this uh, tropical low. Uh, again, development really starting kind of near Hispaniola and the Bahamas, and eventually, uh, becoming a tad stronger as it approaches the general area of Florida or just the southeast in general. Again, potentially could curve up towards the Carolinas, could hit Florida, then go into the Gulf. Uh, and, you know, there's a couple different possibilities here. But just know, uh, most of the European ensemble members show at least some sort of, de of development. Now, that could be tropical depression. That could be tropical storm. That could even be hurricane. But um, we've got time to figure that out. And this wave, again, is going to have a lot of obstacles in its way, mainly that dry air over the next couple of days. But if it survives that and gets out here and wind shear is relaxed enough, uh, we very easily could see some pretty quick development with this. Now, the good news is uh, these are the GFS ensemble members. And you'll notice, well, what are you talking about? What tropical wave? Yeah, not so much. So, um, again, the models are still kind of fighting this one out. We're going to eventually get a winner. It's either going to be the European or the GFS. Uh, and unfortunately, only time will tell. But right now, uh, it's definitely worth watching. This is the biggest chance we've had at development since we had Barrel Hit Texas, uh, you know, earlier this month. So, uh, you know, definitely absolutely worth monitoring here. And we will absolutely continue to do that for you. All right, that was the tropics. Uh, don't go anywhere yet, though, because I've got some other good news for you. And this is going to come in the form of nicer air and drier air for a big portion of the eastern half of the country, specifically the northeastern and Midwest. But uh, first, let me run you through radar for the next couple of days. We'll back this up towards this afternoon, Friday afternoon. Uh, and widespread rain is once again going to be a common theme here in the Carolinas, specifically that section of Carolinas earlier I showed you that had those flood watches up. Uh, again, going to see a lot of rain today. Also rain continuing back near Texas, Louisiana, and even back up towards the Memphis and Nashville area. But again, anyone in the southeast could see some rain this afternoon. Now, one thing I will note is the rain is going to be a little bit less widespread by the time we get to this afternoon than yesterday or the day before. And we're going to be all dry up through much of the Midwest and the Northeast as this drier air already settles in. And the good news is that same dry air is going to work into the Southeast by the time we get into Saturday. So here we go, Saturday morning. Again, anytime now through Saturday morning, rain is going to be possible in the Carolinas. 
But once we hit Saturday, notice this high pressure uh, is kind of bending some of these isobars back down into the Carolinas and kind of funneling in some of that drier, nicer air. Uh, and because of that, I think Saturday and Sunday are easily going to be the best days we've had in a couple of days, probably in a week or two, honestly, uh, through this part of the country. Uh, this is Saturday afternoon. Again, showers possible out near Arkansas, uh, Texas, Louisiana, but even there, less so than we've been seeing. Uh, and this, again, should last all the way into Sunday afternoon with some drier air uh, for the Carolinas, although outside of there through the southeast, Tennessee, Alabama, uh, portions of western Georgia, Mississippi could see a couple pop-up showers and storms. Uh, also, another thing I will know is we could get some low pressure to develop off the coast here, uh, likely very minimal tropical impacts with that, but could be fun to watch on satellite. Uh, but again, that's kind of the next couple of days getting us through the weekend here. And the main reason that I mentioned, again, we're going to get that drier, nicer air, or excuse me, that uh, less rainfall is because of that drier, nicer air. So dew point map here, latest run from our GFS model this morning. Uh, you'll notice here. Again, these dew point values in the blues and the greens are comfortable, while in the oranges uh, and the yellows are a little less comfortable. But we move this into Saturday afternoon and evening. Uh, look at these dew point values. Again, we're very comfortable into the northeast and much of the Ohio River Valley, at least from Louisville uh, eastbound here. Uh, but by the time we're getting into Sunday, um, that drier air really starts to move off towards the south at a place as far south as Charleston, Myrtle Beach, uh, um, excuse me, uh, city names are blanking right now, Raleigh, uh, Roanoke, Danville, Virginia, up through the northeast. Again, we could have a beautiful Sunday in this area. The unfortunate news, though, is look at the other side of this. All that very hot uh, and moist air coming right back out of the Gulf on the western periphery of this high pressure. And unfortunately, it's going to get muggy again quick. And by the time uh, we're getting into the middle of next week, we're right back to summer. So again, enjoy these couple of days while we have them. It's going to be beautiful. Go outside, take a walk, hug a tree, do whatever you want to do. But uh, I suggest you enjoy it before things, unfortunately, uh, go downhill once more. And sure enough, look at this outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Center, six to 10 day temperature probability uh, to start August. Yep, it's going to be hot. So unfortunately, uh, not the greatest news. Some tad bit of good news is rain chances will maintain, not be as high as they have been, but afternoon thunderstorm chances will be possible east of the Mississippi uh, during this time frame. So we'll definitely hope for that. And uh, that should definitely, you know, uh, make things a little bit nicer. But uh, again, I think the big story over the next week is going to be the tropics and probably even longer than that, in all honesty. Uh, and uh, we'll absolutely keep you updated. So again, thank you for joining me. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so like the video. Uh, all of it helps the channel out a lot and helps me as well uh, reach more people and kind of help grow this passion of mine and uh, all of that. So again, I appreciate it. Uh, means a lot. And um, yeah, with that said, hope you have a great rest of your Friday and I'll see you all tomorrow.